Our movie starts smoothly with a man's figure, Aki, our main character in this cinematic tale. Aki, with the wind dancing through his hair, looks lost in his own thoughts as he stands contemplating the city from above. In the following few moments, we depict a band taking center stage, playing music passionately. The main themes of the movie became apparent in the very first seconds, they are none other than the fervent harmonies of music and love. As the events unfold, we witness a huge concert of a famous singer, whose voice is one of the finest in the country, and his team members sharing exhilarating moments with the audience, who seems enamored by their music, prompting ceaseless cheers and thunderous applause. In the ensuing sequence, people are captivated by a large screen, revealing the new album by a band named Crude Play, with a mention that all songs are written by Aki, the artistic genius, a revelation that piqued the curiosity and interest of all the viewers. Following that, we depict a helicopter landing upon the rooftop of a towering building, where Aki stands, with annihilation etched on his face. A trio of members of the band head purposefully towards him. Their laughter and banter create a symphony of friendship. They insist on Aki joining them while teasing him playfully, which urges him to leave, however, they manage to pull him back into their enjoyable embrace. Only one of the four lingers in the background, observing the scene from afar. When the group of friends approach the waiting helicopter, Shinya, the boy with glasses, gracefully steps back, prompting Aki to call out for him. Shinya, on the other hand, responds with a simple yet gentle statement, saying that the helicopter only has four seats, kindly emphasizing that he will let them enjoy each other's company since they share the bonds of old childhood friendships. He shares his intentions to head to the party lounge, his departure marked by steady and measured steps. One of Aki's friends informs him that they did it on purpose, emphasizing that being around Shinya or dealing with him isn't easy. With a reassuring tone, he suggests going immediately to celebrate their album. While in the helicopter, their shared laughs are echoing through the cabin. However, Aki, wearing a cold and sad expression, gazes through the window with eyes that seem momentarily lost in thought. He vulnerably admits to feeling moody in recent days, expressing his emotions in a raw and sincere manner. Unfortunately, he remains uncertain about the underlying cause of his changing demeanor. In the following scene, we paint an image of the quartet stepping out of the building upon reaching their destination. Suddenly, a car comes to a stop in front of them, unveiling Takagi, the band's manager. With a touch of annoyance evident on Aki's face, Takagi addresses them, conveying that people are eagerly awaiting to celebrate their success. However, Aki takes his leave, gracefully declining the invitation to join the party and expressing that he has already enjoyed a fulfilling time with his friends. As he strides forth, Takagi's urgent voice echoes, inquiring about the completion of the soon-expected song, World Peace. Aki, with deliberate disregard, departs swiftly. Amidst the puzzlement that lingers, his friend unravels the truth. Aki cherishes crafting music as a beautiful passion, vehemently rejecting the notion of commercializing it. Yet Takagi has a completely different perspective, asserting that music finds purpose in its sale. Lost in the city's bustling streets, Aki traverses, absorbed in contemplation. He envisions people immersed in music anytime, anywhere. While acknowledging the ease of access, Aki perceives it as a squandering of musical essence. His homeward journey leads past the train station adorned with the band's posters, embodying his belief that music offers an escape to a flawless realm when life's strains weigh heavy. In his house, seated before his PC, Aki immerses himself in the creation of music, fingers dancing upon piano keys, conjuring and chanting melodies. An empty sensation pervades him. By the morning, he concludes the demo after lengthy hours of concentration, and devotion. Removing his headset with a sense of accomplishment, he strides purposefully to the kitchen, seeking solace in the cool embrace of bottled water. Little did he fathom that Mary, his girlfriend, lay gracefully on the couch. Startled by her presence, Aki chides her for the unexpected entrance. Mary, ever the cunning one, draws near, inquiring with beguiling charm if he has completed her song. A chill in Aki's countenance reveals a truth untold. He has severed ties with Takagi. Undeterred, Mary endeavors to sway him. Yet Aki, with stoic resolve, rebuffs her advances. His words unveil a stark reality, their relationship has reached an impasse. Images of Mary entwined with another, linger as an impassable barrier. The declaration echoes through the room, a heartbreaking end to their relationship. As he prepares to depart, Aki retrieves his remote-controlled plane. He implores Mary to relinquish the key to their shared house. The stage is set for the final act, a somber exit from a chapter of love and loss. In the tranquil setting beside the sea, Aki is captured, maneuvering his plane in an attempt to put an end to his inner torment. As he turns, fate guides his gaze towards the band's poster, igniting a furious tempest within him. Control slips from his grasp, and the plane falls to the ground, shattering into pieces. Anger pulsates, urging him to shatter the remote, yet amidst the turmoil, he finds solace, gathering his breath. Standing tall, he unleashes a passionate melody, immersing himself in a realm of emotions. Meanwhile, a young girl, riding a bicycle, halts upon hearing the mesmerizing tones of Aki's song. 
Drawn closer, she falters, tumbling to the ground along with the vegetables she carries. A key, taken aback, turns towards her as she rushes to apologize. In his hand, he holds a mushroom, captivated by its form and how it resembles the girl's hair, before posing a whimsical query to the girl, pondering love at first sight. Startled, she stands silent, her words held captive. Recognizing the abruptness of his inquiry, Aki jokes and apologizes, reaching for his plane's remote to depart. Yet, the girl, gripped by embarrassment, seizes and pulls him back, confessing her belief in love's sudden embrace, evoking a look of astonishment on Aki's face. In a moment, the girl confesses that her very skin danced with goosebumps when she heard his sweet and soothing voice. Curious about his name, she introduces herself as Rico Koda. Yet Aki, awash with hesitation, kept his true identity, since his name is everywhere on billboards. Instead, he introduces himself as Shinya Agasawara. The next sequence unfolds as the band members grace an interview stage, where the presenter's gaze falls upon Shinya Shinya, the newest addition to the group. Confessions spill forth, acknowledging Shinya's role in filling the void left by Aki's departure as a bassist. Meanwhile, Aki, amidst a conversation with his friend, Shun, over the phone, discloses having a date. All of a sudden, the band's calls interrupt their discourse, leaving Shun with a plea for Aki to behave cautiously. Therefore, Aki promises to strive ardently to fall madly in love with her. But before he steps out, Takagi arrives suddenly, inadvertently stumbling upon his conversation, teasing him that his stunning new girlfriend is only with him because he is Aki of the crude play. However, Aki dismisses her awareness of his true identity with a confident smile. And before embarking on his journey, Aki kindly advises Takagi to consider a wardrobe change before heading home, as his clothes carry the lingering and beautiful scent of Mary's perfume, subtly unveiling his awareness of the relationship between him and Mary, both of them had betrayed him. Next, we vividly portray Aki heading to meet Rico, and as he leisurely strolls between the rows, he catches talks of two girls engaged in a conversation about him, wondering why he might be concealing himself. Much to Aki's surprise and slight annoyance, he regrettably finds himself unable to react or respond to such rumors that only add to his mystique. Suddenly, in a flash of joy, Rico joins Aki with a beaming face. Spotting the crude play stand, she eagerly pulls Aki towards it, revealing her immense interest in their songs, especially those written by Aki himself. Aki wears a look of confusion Fusion, causing Rico to wonder if he's familiar with the band. Aki, in response with a perplexed tone, admits that he doesn't indulge in music much. Out of the blue, Rico's friends approach them with a hint of curiosity and mischief, questioning Aki about his background. Discovering he's a neat, neither in education, employment, nor training, they mock him. This urges Rico to swiftly intervene, forcefully pushing them to the ground, seizing Aki's hand, and running away from the crowd. Together, they dash through the streets, across the lake, and over the bridge until they reach a concealed place away from people. As they catch their breath, Rico's curiosity is piqued by the melody Aki was humming the day they first met. Despite asking her friends, no one seems familiar with it, leaving Aki confused and unable to offer an explanation. Only a laugh escapes his lips. Just as Rico prepares to sing the song herself, Aki places a hand over her mouth, gently pushing her against the wall. After releasing her and apologizing for his actions, Rico questions his odd behavior. Aki, with his head down, confesses disliking songs and especially girls who sing. Meanwhile, Rico wears a puzzled expression, observing the scene. A single tear escapes Aki's eye, catching Rico's attention. Concerned, Rico wonders about the reason behind Aki's tears, but he brushes it off. Aki turns away, asking Rico not to witness his vulnerability. But Rico gently takes his face in her hands, offering comfort with soft caresses and tender kisses, and promising to protect him. Her soothing words resonate with Inaki, prompting him to embrace her, developing into a passionate kiss, a shared moment that deepens their connection after an emotionally charged situation. In the next scene, we find Takagi in a discussion with his assistant about the necessity of convincing Aki to write the perfect song for Mary, a move they hope will elevate their sales. However, his assistant discloses that Aki seems bothered lately, a detail Takagi deems advantageous, believing Aki's songwriting skills increase when he grapples with inner turmoil. Intrigued, Takagi decides to personally visit Aki. Meanwhile, we observe Rico in the company of her two friends, forming a small band united by their shared passion for music. Despite her confusion lingering from Aki's declaration that he doesn't like female singers, Rico joins her friends at their usual spot. Her contemplation continues as she hesitates to join in their singing, thinking about Aki's words. Yet her friends persist, acknowledging that without her voice and musical abilities, their unity is incomplete. Gathering courage, Rico overcomes her hesitancy, seizing her guitar and singing with great enthusiasm. In this story unfolding before our eyes, Aki goes back home, only to find Mary patiently awaiting his return. A sad expression graces her countenance as she discloses the burden of her regret for betraying him. She lays bare her soul, confessing a long-standing connection with Takagi, reaching back to her high school days, and attributing her success to him. Aki, with a tender smile, shares the news of encountering a girl who cherishes him without knowing his true identity, as Aki from Crude Play. 
This newfound partner pledges unwavering protection. A key, firm in his commitment, declares his intent to hold on to this newfound love, much to Mary's grief. Meanwhile, as Takagi embarks on a quest to find Aki, he chances upon the bridge, captivated by the enchanting scene of Rico and her friends engrossed in a musical symphony. Standing transfixed, he immerses himself in the joy derived from their performance. Takagi joins in applause. Inviting them to his office, he expresses genuine interest in their ascent to fame as a band, recognizing their latent potential. He assures them that playing music is unnecessary, emphasizing that professionals are entrusted with that task. To the amazement of Rico and her friends, he reveals that even crude play themselves don't play live. In the subsequent scene, as the crude play's band is deeply engaged in playing their music, Takagi makes an unexpected entrance, catching them off guard. Takagi beholds their musical endeavors with a belittling tone. Yet, in a moment that shatters their happiness, he delivers the disheartening news that professionals will take the stage instead, much to their rage. This announcement instills an air of unease and trepidation among the team members. Upon Takagi's exit, a member of the ensemble, unable to contain his frustration, erupts in a vehement shout, pushed by the impulse to pursue Takagi and dispute this unforeseen turn of events. However, Shun intervenes, urging restraint. By chance, Aki happens to be present in the building. Leaving the trio behind in his office, Takagi approaches Aki, inquiring if he has an interest in becoming a producer, having found the perfect musical trio. Aki, however, firmly declines, asserting that he won't take advantage of these young talents as Takagi once did to him and his friends. Before departing, Shinji joins the conversation, expressing approval and readiness to seize the opportunity. However, Aki remains resolute, walking away in frustration. In the studio, we witness Riko, immersed in heartfelt melody, singing with an enchanting fervor. Takagi and Shinya stand as attentive witnesses to the magic woven by her voice. Shinya, captivated, confesses his affection for her voice, acknowledging that had Aki been present, his heart might have swayed. Nevertheless, he asserts that Riko is now his muse, and he vows to cherish her. Behind the glass, Riko catches sight of Shinya, the famous bassist, and an overwhelming joy paints her face with an authentic smile. Later, on the train, Aki's gaze falls upon an album cover featuring his friends as he scrolls through phone pictures. His eyes linger on the image with a nostalgic reflection. The scene transports us back to a bygone period, where the band anticipates their upcoming album. Takagi interrupts the merriment, asking Aki for a private conversation. In his office, Takagi imparts a revelation that leaves Aki astonished. Professional musicians are set to record the music in the place of the band's members. Aki asks about his replacement, prompting Takagi to escort him to another room. There, Shinya, a guitarist introduced by Takagi, plays skillfully, a year younger than Aki. Aki's gaze betrays his inner turmoil, his countenance clouded by disappointment and sorrow. Addressing Takagi, Aki makes one request, to replace him with Shinya, signaling his departure from the band. This decision, as fate would have it, results in Shinya's picture on the album cover instead of Aki's. Later that night, we find Aki near the bridge, lost in contemplation, reminiscing about the old days. He opens his list of contacts, seeking Rico's number, but hesitates about making the call. In an unexpected turn, a call from Rico lights up his phone, and he promptly answers. Rico discloses a matter of great import, yet Aki remains silent momentarily. Finally, he queries Rico about the nature of the peril she wishes to protect him from, and she reassures him, pledging to guard him against any harm. When he inquires about her whereabouts, the sound of a boat reverberates through their phones, and, scanning the surroundings, they spot each other. With unbridled joy, Rico rushes towards him. But before reaching him, the contents of her bag spill onto the ground, prompting Aki to burst into laughter. Amidst collecting her scattered belongings, Aki spontaneously embraces her, vowing to protect and care for her. The next morning, Aki is pictured alongside Shun, who drives the car, engaged in a conversation about Aki's newfound love, Rico. Shun erupts into laughter upon discovering that Aki faked his name, presenting himself as Shinya. He queries whether Aki intends to come clean, confessing his true identity, and after some moments of reflection, Aki, with a hint of hesitation in his tone, admits that he will indeed reveal the truth. In the meantime, Rico and her friends head to the studio, as previously arranged, to witness the debut of Crude Play's new single. As they proceed, Mary captivates Rico's attention with her splendid appearance. Rico admires Mary's charm. Just then, Shinya enters the scene and guides Rico and her friend to the studio, where everyone prepares themselves for the performance. As they amble through, Shinya reveals that they are the inaugural audience for the new single. Curious about Aki, Rico queries Shinya, who deems him a foolish yet undoubtedly brilliant person. Shinya expresses his belief that Aki considers himself insignificant and labels him an idiot. Despite this, Rico, her eyes gleaming, confesses her affection for Aki's compositions. Shinya, wearing a disdainful expression, reluctantly admits that he also loves Aki's songs, though he secretly wishes otherwise. Concurrently, Aki is coincidentally present in the building. Upon entering the bathroom, he unexpectedly encounters Rico's friend. Astonished by this unexpected meeting, Aki hastily exits, 
searching for Takagi. Upon confronting Takagi and informing him that Riko is his girlfriend, Aki discovers that her voice is captivating and she possesses a remarkable singing talent. Takagi suggests that she could be a splendid singer, potentially enhancing his artistic endeavors and business prospects. Enraged, Aki, with a serious demeanor, asserts that he will not allow Takagi to manipulate Riko for personal gain. He strides onto the stage, hurrying, where the band has already begun playing their latest tune. Riko is deeply engrossed in listening to the song. She closes her eyes, marveling at both the lyrics and the melodies. Suddenly, she realizes that the song is the very one Aki sang on the day they first met. Tears well up in her eyes as Aki approaches. He confesses to deceiving her and reveals his true identity, Aki, the songwriter of Crude's play. Riko is left both astonished and sorrowful. Later, as they ride the train to Aki's home, he apologizes for concealing his true self. Riko, in turn, confesses to her own deception about her singing. Aki mentions that he knew her singing talent since he first heard her voice under the bridge. He apologizes for preventing her from singing that day. In the elevator, Riko admits she doesn't believe Aki is a liar, much to Aki's surprise. She reveals that when she first heard his hum, it resonated like a cry to her, touching her heart. That's when she felt the desire to protect him, making her believe he was more honest than anyone else. Aki gazes at her in silence, admiring her eloquent words. They reach Aki's dwelling, and as they step inside, Riko is still perplexed to realize that he is the true Aki. She sees a bass, and Aki reveals it as the first one he acquired at the tender age of 12. He recounts that, on his birthday, his father devoted all his savings to procuring the priciest guitar. Brimming with joy, he races to Shun's abode, only to discover it was a bass. Shun proposes forming a band, and soon Kaoru and Tepe join, completing the quartet. Riko expresses her wish to hear him play the bass, but he dismisses her, stating it's meant for a band. She inspects the cover of her beloved Crude Plays song and begins singing until her gaze locks with the keys, causing her to halt. Aki, seizing his guitar, starts playing and invites Riko to sing, much to her delight. While she serenades, Aki gazes at her with eyes brimming with passion and affection, confessing his love for her. Their enjoyment of each other's presence permeates the air with tangible love. In the subsequent scene, we witness Aki escorting Riko to her abode. Following their fond farewells, on his journey back home, Aki is suddenly seized by inspiration. He begins to hum, hastily making his way to his modest studio to craft a fresh composition. Later, Aki discloses to Shun his fervent resolve to write Riko's melodies personally. However, Shun raises a skeptical inquiry, questioning Aki's capacity to compose both Riko's tunes and those of crude play simultaneously. Aki confidently affirms that he won't hasten the band's music. Takagi, however, has a contrasting perspective. When requested to become Riko's songsmith, Takagi vehemently declines, emphasizing the need to concentrate solely on the band's compositions, citing Shinya's demo as already prepared. Storming out in anger, he coincidentally crosses paths with Shinya. In their encounter, Shinya confesses his ignorance regarding Riko's relationship with him, expressing remorse for joining Crude Play and revealing his prolonged misery. He confesses to yearning for his own musical journey, finding solace when he encounters Mush. Aki, perplexed about Mush, learns from Shinya that he bestowed that name upon Riko. Shinya turns to Aki, cheekily declaring his refusal to give up on her, then departs, leaving Aki bewildered. Meanwhile, at Riko's high school, a microphone announcement asks her and her two friends to join the gym. Upon entering, they are astounded by a throng of journalists and cameras, unveiling them as the new musical band, Mush & Co. An event has been orchestrated to announce the commencement of their band, much to the astonishment of the trio. In his dwelling, Aki is perusing the internet when his gaze alights upon an article announcing the start of Riko's musical band. Suddenly, the doorbell chimes, and upon answering, Riko stands there, visibly breathless after eluding the gathering. Thereupon, we witness Aki and Riko strolling down the streets, with Riko confessing her trepidation. Aki queries whether she truly aspires to debut, and with a hesitant demeanor, she avows her love for singing. Aki, perpetually benevolent, assures her of protecting her vocal endeavors and expresses a yearning for her to perform his compositions. He recounts a time when he turned his back on music. He admits that Riko's presence allows him to confront it anew. This revelation elicits a heartfelt smile from Riko. Holding a Pepsi bottle, Aki inquires about its flavor. Riko describes it as lemony. Upon taking a sip, Aki leans in for a passionate kiss, confirming the lemony taste and brightening Riko's eyes with joy. In the subsequent scene, during Takaga's team meeting regarding the debut of Mush & Co., Aki enters with a CD in hand. Presenting it to Takagi, he is met with skepticism about his ability to write suitable songs for Riko. Undeterred, Aki urges Takagi to give it a chance before departing. Later, within the confines of his car, Takagi plays the CD, and an exuberant smile graces his countenance. Following that, Riko and her friends arrive at the studio for their debut song performance. Upon entering, Riko comes across Mary, who beckons her over. Mary invites her for a little chat, expressing admiration for Crude Play's latest song. She openly confesses regret over her past breakup with Aki, leaving Riko saddened. As Mary departs, Aki happens to enter the building. 
Mary hurries to him, sharing an umbrella and getting intimately close, all within Rico's view. It dawns on her that Aki misled her about disliking singing girls. Swiftly, she grabs her guitar and flees from Aki. The next moments show Rico, immersed in Crude Play's new single. She reflects on the moments she witnessed between Aki and Mary, struggling to comprehend their relationship. Suddenly, Shinya approaches with a water bottle, offering solace. Taking up the bass, Shinya encourages Rico to sing a song he composed for her. Initially hesitant, she eventually joins in, her melodious voice filling the air. Meanwhile, Takagi commends Aki for the song dedicated to Rico, considering it the best he's ever written. However, Takagi reveals a paparazzi-captured photo of Aki and Rico kissing. He stresses that if this article gets published, it could significantly impact Rico's singing debut. Takagi proposes a deal, he'll suppress the article under one condition, Aki must make his relationship with Mary public. Aki, with a perplexed expression, grapples with the dilemma of sacrificing Rico for her singing career, or being selfish and keeping her for himself. As he converses with Shun through the phone, a familiar voice catches his ear. Curiosity leads him to the studio, where Rico and Shinya sing together harmoniously. Watching Rico smile dance along with the melody, he makes a tough choice and leaves, heartbroken. The next morning, Rico bids goodbye to her parents, engrossed in the TV, heading to school. Suddenly, a news flash stops her in her tracks. Her disbelief mounts as she sees Aki and Mary romantically linked all over the internet and in magazines. Shocked and overwhelmed, Rico stands lost in turmoil. Across the city, Aki, by the bridge, absent-minded, plays with his plane when Rico approaches. He admits the truth of the article, confessing his relationship with Mary. Rico recalls Aki's first words to her, love at first sight. However, Aki shatters her hopes, admitting that it was all a lie and asserting a lack of affection for her. Rico, bewildered and heartbroken, watches Aki walk away without a glance back, leaving her weeping on the ground. Later, on the stairs, Aki breaks down, crying uncontrollably and smashing his phone in pain, grieving the loss of Rico. In another scene, Mary takes the stage in a press conference, unveiling her new song written by Aki, the same one he wrote for Rico. At Rico's school, classmates praise Mary's song and her relationship with Aki. Overwhelmed with sorrow, Rico flees the classroom in tears. In the following few scenes, Aki loses himself in the enchanting world of music. Meanwhile, Rico seeks comfort in running, attempting to elude her own troubling thoughts. The days unfold, each consumed in its own separate sphere. As Aki walks through the streets, concealing his face to avoid the prying eyes of paparazzi, the big screen showcases Rico's latest musical creation with her band. Aki gazes at the details, recalling moments shared, before continuing on his journey. On the other hand, during a phone conversation with the band, Takagi discloses that Aki has sent all of his compositions, an unexpected move shrouded in mystery. In the subsequent scene, Rico, on her bicycle, arrives at Aki's place. She steps inside with heavy strides, reaching for his base. She cradles it in her arms, seeking solace. Overwhelmed, she collapses to the ground, tears streaming down her cheeks. Suddenly, Aki enters, oblivious to Rico's presence. He begins packing his belongings, only to be surprised by Rico standing before him. Astonished, he gazes at her with wide eyes, speechless. Rico inquires if he's leaving, then immediately seizes the base and dashes out, running to hold on to a piece of him. Aki follows her through the streets, but she escapes him with her swiftness. Shun, the ever-compassionate friend, pays a visit to Aki to ensure his well-being. Upon entering the house, he notices a plane ticket beneath which lies a CD. Failing to find Rico, Aki returns home. As Shun hears Aki approaching, he takes the CD and conceals it. Shun pays a visit to Rico at the studio. Rico appears overwhelmed by sadness. Rico discloses the sorrowful news that Aki is departing, and regrettably, she cannot halt his departure. Shun reveals Aki's plan to fly to England, assuring Rico of his return. He remarks on the remarkable transformation he witnesses in Aki's countenance, a radiant smile that owes its existence to Rico's influential presence over the years. Before departing, Shun admits to snatching a CD from Aki's house and handing it to Rico, urging her to listen to its recently composed songs for the truth and lies they hold. He also informs her of Aki's departure scheduled for the upcoming week. Rico, following her routine stroll along the bridge, puts on her headset and begins listening to the songs. The melodies resonate deeply, evoking tears from her eyes. Meanwhile, Aki lays despondently on the ground when Shun bids him a heartfelt farewell. On the other side of the city, the debut live performance of the Mush and Co band begins, eliciting excitement from the crowd. However, Rico grapples with unease and frustration, preoccupied with thoughts of Aki. Takagi approaches her, offering words of wisdom and emphasizing gratitude for the debut opportunity. He encourages her to live in the moment, singing with unwavering passion from the depths of her heart. On the grand stage, thunderous applause greets the band. Yet Rico, for brief moments, maintains a hushed composure, gathering her thoughts before starting her heartfelt serenade. A radiant smile graces her countenance as she shares her passion with the audience. Elsewhere, Aki embarks on a journey to the airport. 
Abruptly, a call from Shun intercepts him, extolling the excellence of the live performance and urging him to retrieve his guitar. A key, filled with anticipation, queries Shun about Rico's presence, only to be informed that she has been dragged away to revel in a celebration, an unforeseen blow to Aki's spirits. Upon Shun's suggestion, Aki sets forth to the venue of the performance. Despite a fruitless search for Shun, a familiar melody captivates Aki's senses, the unmistakable strains of his own composition. A startling revelation dawns as he discovers Shun has taken his musical creation. Approaching Rico, who skillfully plays the bass, their eyes lock. In a sudden turn of events, she strikes him gently, confessing a myriad of unspoken feelings that elude the precise words. She wonders whether his musical compositions truly unveil his inner self, a notion vehemently denied by Aki. A knowing smile graces Rico's lips, she hands him the bass, takes up her guitar, and proposes a duo. After a moment of reflection, Aki settles on a bench, his fingers caressing the strings. Rico joins in, her voice enchanting and her emotions laid bare. Eyes locked, unspoken sentiments traverse the gaze. In this climactic scene, we bid farewell to this cinematic narrative. The film draws to a melancholic close, with Aki conceding that he lacks the privilege to eternally love Rico.